It's the Alliance CEO is Oliver Latte. He's dressed the summit today. He's with me now. Um, Oliver, first of all, you know, I'm not taking you into British politics too far, but do you think it's curious what the British Prime Minister announced today? I don't think it's appropriate as a German that I comment on what the UK Prime Minister does. But in general, I would say delaying action is increasing cost massively for uh, the next few years and beyond. So and we've been pushing the can down the road uh, for too long. So we need action now. But it has nothing to do with the UK alone. It applies to Germany and many other countries as well. The issue was, as you and I have discussed before, all roads, when it comes to climate change to a certain extent, besides political will and commitment, all roads lead to climate financing. And I know you're heavily involved in that. And, and you, you, you believe that there's enough money. It's just how it's distributed and how it's raised. Exactly right. So there is no lack of money. Um, it's a lack of sort of incentivizing the markets properly to put the money uh, where the action is supposed to be. And as we've just heard, it's not just in the UK, but in many countries where we one part of the political sphere says one thing and another one says something completely different and actually tries to fight the investment into battling climate change, which is quite stunning. It happens also here in the United States. Right, so when uh, you we, we are ready uh, and we will do that. By the way, and uh, fortunately today we were the only company present in the climate debate uh, from the private sector. So it was very important to show uh, how we are reallocating our capital to uh, actually meet the net zero requirements of 250 and much earlier to really make progress 25 and 30. Every CEO I speak to says it's high on their agenda, but they complain either about shifting goalposts or difficulty of accessing capital, or they simply don't understand what needs to be done. I think people need to get a little bit more practical, Richard. We talk too much about new targets, higher targets, higher ambitions, as we've just learned in the case. When uh, we put industry in motion, says, for example, by 230, we don't want any more combustion in cars. Billions of capital, as you've mentioned, have been allocated to do so already. And we now need to follow up with these things. The worst thing that can happen for the economy is we continuously change the targets and then people stop investing in the transition. That's the worst outcome. What was your main message today? The first one, I think, is when we started the Net Zero Asset Owner Alliance in 2019 in the same building that we were talking today, the world was a totally different place, Richard. You know, we had money didn't cost anything. Uh, China was powering growth in the world. You know, for Europe, we got cheap gas and energy from the East. All of that's gone. And we have inflation back. So it's no surprise that politicians find climate change financing even more difficult than it was a few years ago. And the old problems we had, you know, how do we manage migration? How do we fund affordable health care, affordable housing and have a proper pension have not gone away. So now it is really hard to make sure we focus on the thing that will really impact uh, at least our children's life and make, may make this planet uninhabitable. But the bigger the short term problems are, the harder it is to manage uh, the economy for the long run. I, I just always feel that at the end of the day, we... We make minuscule progress. Now, I'm sure there will be viewers who will write to me who will say, no, look at the amount of progress that's been made since X, Y, Z. But we are failing on the Paris commitments. We've got a COP28 coming ahead where there are concerns that fossil fuels will still be far more important. We've got a German situation where, you know, the, 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 yes, they did very well in Germany to, uh, to wean off a royal, uh, Russian or, uh, gas or oil and gas, but there's so much more to be done. Yeah, there's always so much more to be done. I'm an optimist. And again, Germany has only 1.6 percent of, you know, CO2 emissions globally. We're still fully committed to make our contribution to what has to be done. It's really more important that the European community overall, and we have a program, it's really important, Richard, to focus on the practical things. And from our political leaders, we need less, uh, less fear mongering, but more encouragement of change. We need to celebrate more successes on how, you know, energy transition can be done. 
and we need less regulation and bureaucracy and you know thousands of papers or from the from the commission in brussels on what we ought to be doing rather than deploying capital and building the electricity grids building renewable energy and it's happening it is happening it's not true that it's not happening we can show it to you for what what we do every day and it's working you just wish it would go a bit faster, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. And it's very true uh, that we all are very impatient. But the key thing, this is a marathon. This is not a sprint. And the, the uh, scarce thing in, in the community is really resilience, which is something very important in our industry, and is, you know, to do this uh, over the long haul and not give up. This is the key thing that we should not really let go of. Whatever politicians do for the short term, for like, this is the weakness of democracy. You know, uh, politicians need to get uh, reelected and they do whatever they have to do to do that. And that is often not consistent in the long run. But it's not just politics. In the capital markets, we have the same nonsense. You know, we incentivize to do ever more buybacks and a capital returns rather than focusing on investing it in higher growth. Mm. So we'll have the issues everywhere and we need to work on it. Oliver, I'm very glad you were here with us today. I'm grateful to you always, sir. Thank you.